My name is Linda Allen Hollis, and I am the great-granddaughter of Major George William Ford, who is also the great-great-grandson of George Washington. In the Ford oral history, George Washington slept with a slave named Venus, and they had a son named West Ford. And West Ford was the only black son of the very first president of the United States of America. West Ford was freed at the age of 21, but his mother, Venus, his grandmother, Jenny, and his sister, Betty, would remain slaves all the days of their lives. Fortunately, George Ford would be born free because his parents were free. From a small boy living on the Mount Vernon plantation, George Ford always wanted to become a soldier. It was his whole life. His grandfather, Wes Ford, made him a, a toy sword, which he would run around the plantation with and practice his sword play. But deep in his mind, he was always wanting to emulate George Washington because he was the first of the Ford offspring to carry the name George, George William Ford and George William Washington. From that young boy who started out guarding the tomb of George Washington, he wanted to take it a step further. So in 1866, when the 39th Congress decided that they were gonna establish uh, a military unit composed of all black soldiers, he joined. It wasn't what he expected. When George Ford joined the military, he was joining with so many other black Americans who wanted a chance at equality and respect after being held in bondage for over 200 years. They wanted to be somebody. They wanted to be a part of the fabric of America. And so they joined in the military to get the chance to be equal and to be respected as a man not as a, a beast of burden, they wanted to be men. The morale of these newly freed enslaved was burst when they arrived at their first post at Fort Riley. They were excited. They wanted to become a soldier. They wanted to have a weapon. They wanted to get out and be a part of the U.S. military. And what did they get? They got tired horses that should have been put down, bad weapons that hardly wanted to fire, used uniforms from the Civil War. And then they found that they couldn't even barrack with the rest of the troops. They had to be put way back in the back of the fort and be separated from the white troops. They also found that many of the commanding officers, they didn't want anything to do with the, the black soldiers. They felt that they were inferior. They felt that they didn't have the skills to be in the military. So they were harsher with them on their drills. They found that discrimination didn't leave with abolition or the 13th Amendment. They were still being discriminated against. And they were asked to do really jobs that had nothing to do with being a soldier. But that didn't deter these brave men and it didn't detour George Ford. He helped to establish the camaraderie that they would need to go further on in becoming a soldier. Many of the soldiers respected George Ford because at one time when they were finished with their basic training, General Custer and Sherman and uh, a lot of the uh, troops, they had to parade past these generals. But black troops, they had to stand off to the side. They were not going to be part of this grand venture of leaving Fort Riley and going to their next uh, post. And so the troops were kind of grumbling a little bit because they felt like they were being slighted. And George told those soldiers, you have to stand proud. You have to stand tall. Do not let them take your dignity. You are U.S. Cavalry soldiers. We are gonna prove who we are. We're gonna do our jobs. We're gonna be loyal. We're gonna be patriotic. And we're gonna show them what the 10th can do. In doing this documentary, I wanted to bring in some experts who would be able to help me to tell the story of Major George Ford. Dr. Carl Blunt is a friend and also a renowned historian in African-American studies. The one thing I found about George Ford, man, beside him being one of the first to enlist in 1867, he was the last to die in 1939. So for historians like me, that is a, a fantastic run. Secondly, he was an educated man. Whites and blacks were illiterate because it was a mandatory. Third fact was that he volunteered for service in Cuba during the Spanish-American War at age of 50. 
those three things just astonished me. Frank Schubert is a famed military historian. The main reason why the Buffalo Soldiers are important is because they participated in the central drama of American history at that time. The westward movement, the expansion of the country across the continent. And my work on Buffalo Soldiers centered really on that, about who were these guys. And George Ford was really one of the more interesting ones uh, because he had such an extraordinary life for a black man living through the 19th century. So a guy who comes out of a slave community and becomes one of the original 10th Cavalrymen in 1867, and then goes on to become a quartermaster sergeant, which meant he could read and write and serve 10 years, and goes on then into service in the national cemetery system and becomes a, a, a director of national cemeteries, also becomes a major in the volunteer regiment that served in Cuba after the war as part of the occupation force. This guy had an extraordinary life. Paul Matthews is a lecturer and an author and the founder of the Buffalo Soldiers Museum in Houston, Texas. The Buffalo Soldiers were the peacekeepers in the American West. They built camps, forts, railroads, delivered the mail, strung telegraph wires, charted the land, chased down outlaws, Without the Buffalo Soldiers, the Westwood Movement would have been delayed 50 years. The mission at the Buffalo Soldier National Museum is to preserve, promote, and perpetuate the honor and legacy of the brave men and women who fought, bled, and died in defense of America. And Trooper Ford is a classic example of that. George Ford became friends after the Spanish-American War with Teddy Roosevelt. And there's letters in the National Archive showing their friendship, where they're talking to one another about being a soldier, taming the West, and that led to a long lifetime friendship of Teddy Roosevelt and Major George Ford. Despite the odds of a black man succeeding in the U.S. military as a 10th Cavalry soldier, he worked his way to becoming a regimental quartermaster sergeant. He worked his way to become superintendent for five national cemeteries, an honor that no other black man had received. He worked his way with becoming friends of W.B.E. Du Bois and becoming part of the Niagara Movement, which was a precursor to the NAACP. So when you look at George Ford's history, a lot of firsts, and you look at the timing, the 1800s to the 1930s. He was a Renaissance man. He spanned it several decades. The service to his country was never a question and also the service to his people also as well, looking for equality. I mean, this is a guy whose, whose grandfather had been enslaved, okay? And, uh, and, and it's through the army that uh, he starts his climb to respectability. George Ford, as my understanding, is the uh, classic success story of the African-American. And he moved forward and became an inspiration to individuals like myself. It was the George Fords of the world that built the bridge that I crossed when I became an officer in the military. George Ford persevered at a time when many of the African-American race were still being discriminated against, and he didn't let that stop him. Paving the way for other African-Americans, even like Colin Powell, who became a soldier, who became a soldier on the backs of the very first soldiers, the black enlisted men of the 9th and 10th Cavalry, soldiers like Major George Ford, who was the last one standing when he passed away at the age of 91 in Springfield. Today, I'm here to honor my grandfather's service and to honor the service of all those 9th and 10th Cavalry soldiers who gave their lives to help build America, to build the infrastructure. Major George Ford shows us that with courage and perseverance, that you can become anyone that you wish to become in America. America is great, but they also need to remember the soldiers of the 10th and the 9th Cavalry 
like my grandfather, Major George Ford. Yeah.